What do you see here? You wouldn't recognize it now, would you? Because what you're seeing is actually feng shui. Yeah, you heard it right, feng shui. Now, you might be thinking, how is that feng shui? I mean, I thought it was supposed to be with, you know, objects like special rings, special cats that wave their hands, some statues, some something, right? Something tangible, right? Feng shui has to do with something that you can see, you can touch a place usually somewhere in your house according to some very special rules. Well, <laughs> you see, that's why uh, it doesn't work for you because you have this very, unfortunately, very, very uh, common misconception about what feng shui is. So <laughs> let's dive right in. So guys, the idea is that feng shui actually, the name, it's actually two names, yeah, feng shui. Literally, it means in Chinese, wind and water. So feng is wind, uh, shui is water. So these words have a special meaning because the idea is that the very essence of this science is the fact that the energy of the environment which transforms our lives, which influences our lives and to a very large degree uh, determines how successful or unsuccessful our lives are, is coming from the outside environment. That's why, as my friend was saying, when, when I started learning feng shui, he was quoting one of the, the masters and he was saying, feng shui, when it's professionally done, you don't see it. You don't recognize that it's been done. And those words for, for years echoed in my head. So I'll say them again, right? When you see professional feng shui being done, you do not realize that it's done. So that got me thinking, why not? I mean, is it something like it's, is it supposed to put you in some kind of detective mode because it's so refined that you don't see it? No, it's actually very, very simple, much more simpler than that. So when people expect to see some kind of kittens or some kind of amulets or some kind of, you know, various objects that you place. Now, I ask you, if you're a very intelligent person who asks themselves questions and, you know, wants to understand how things work, don't you ask yourself how in God's name a plastic kitten waving its hand can actually change your life? Do you think that that is a reasonable thing to believe? Or is that maybe closer to superstition? Well, guess what? The ancient Chinese didn't believe in that either. And luckily for us, um, the ancient Chinese actually were very pragmatic. Now, I don't say that they didn't have their superstitions, but you know, each to his own, right? Um, everyone has their right to believe in superstitions. If you want to get better because you're suffering from a disease, yeah, you might pray. I, I have got nothing against prayer. But tell me, do you rely wholly on that prayer? Or do you actually take your child to the doctor? Because you see, that's where a pragmatic approach comes in. And it's not either or, it's not the pragmatic approach or being spiritual, no. It's, they can go together, but you start with the one that you know is gonna yield results. And when it comes to feng shui, there's nothing spiritual about it, right? There's the, you, you don't need to believe in stuff, there's no religion, there's no dogma, there are no objects, guys, because the idea is that the root of feng shui, the one that actually works, is in fact rooted in the influences that we have from the outside environment. It's mother nature that actually, you know, does something. It's mother nature that has the power to influence us. And I'm not saying something that actually Western science doesn't know. We know that there are innumerable influences on our life, on our hormones, on our bodies that we don't feel, but we feel their effects. Yeah. So for example, take the lunar cycle, right? So there are some people who are very sensitive to the moon, to the full moon, to the, you know, so when, when it's full moon, a lot of people uh, have, you know, various symptoms. So do you feel that? Do you feel where the moon is? No, you don't, but you might be feeling indirectly its effects. Well, guess what? That's not feng shui, but the idea is the same, right? The objects, the furniture, 
does not have the power to influence our lives. The real influence is coming from Mother Nature. The real inf influence comes from things that are much, much, much bigger than, you know, household objects or plastic kittens waving their hands. The real influence comes from astronomical bodies. We're talking here about planets. We're talking about our sun. We're talking about distant galaxies, solar systems, right? Galaxies, right? So the, the idea is that there are natural forces at play. So basically during its history, what feng shui did, feng shui practitioners, what they did was to understand what correlations they could do between the success of some people and the in successes of some other people. So it was very empirical, you know, what works? What do they have in common? What do all people that have uh, success in common, what, what, what do they do, right? So when, if they're successful, let's say uh, in uh, money, right? They're, they're rich, what do they have in common? Uh, what do people who are successful in their relationships, they're happy in their marriages and they have a rich and fulfilling family life. What do they have in common? And so on and so forth, right? And they actually did this across centuries. Well, actually across millennia, right? Feng Shui is more than two millennia old. And they actually studied this and they compiled all this knowledge with all their experience and the experience of previous generations and they condensed it into the knowledge that we have access to today. But when I actually say we have access, we, I mean we as humanity, but just like with everything today, there's so much information that it starts to become increasingly difficult to navigate through all the information and misinformation. And unfortunately, feng shui, a lot of it got lost for the average person in misinformation. Because you see, if you think about it, and, and unfortunately I can give you personal examples. I, I know of f uh, fellow students of mine, we've, we've been doing courses with the same teachers, we've been learning from the same teachers, and we know what actually real feng shui uh, is like, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you that in a minute. But unfortunately, these people, some of them, actually choose the easier path. And not, let me give you an example, right? It, what would you say is easier to believe? If I told you that, um, you know, here is an example. If I tell you to sit in that part of the house, because sitting in that part of the house is good for you, is it easier for you to believe in something that you don't see, but I tell you that's beneficial? Or would it be easier for you to believe in something that you can see, you can touch, you can feel, you can smell, all those senses tell you that it's there, it's palpable, right? Well, guess what? Most people, and I mean it statistically, most people find it much easier to believe in things they can smell, touch, because that's our human nature, right? It's if you see it, you believe it. You know the saying, if you see it, you believe it. So you see a plastic kitten. It takes a whole, unfortunately, it's actually painful for me to say this. It takes a whole lot of intelligence to believe that a plastic kitten is not gonna change your life. Where did we all go so wrong? I mean, really? Guys, this is a video for those of you who are dismayed at the idea that, you know, feng shui is about things which doesn't make sense, especially when you look at what kind of things we're talking about. I mean, plastic kittens, come on. But at the same time, you have an intuitive feeling that there is some grain of truth to it. And yes, guys, there is some grain of truth to it because what you're connecting to is an intuitive feeling that, you know, various environments have different energetic influences on us right and you are right if you feel that and it's very easy to prove it at a very microscopic level so for example you go into a house you go into an apartment you go into a place you are feeling it right away you know do you feel good do you feel relaxed do you feel tense we've all been there we've all gone to somebody's house and we instantly felt something different than what we usually feel we either felt more at home more comfortable soothing peaceful relaxing or we didn't right we felt um, maybe neutral or we felt a strong urge to go away we felt that we want to get up and go and just you know, forget about the place without any rational explanation right so that is feng shui 
Did you feel that way because you saw a plastic thingy in the corner? No, you didn't. You felt it because that's how it felt. And those influences are not tangible. They're not, you know, palpable. We have this notion that somehow intuitively, even though rationally we know it's not so, intuitively, if we see it, it exists. If we don't see it, it doesn't exist. Rationally, we know that we can see less than 1% of the real universe we know is out there. We scientifically know it's out there. We can see less than 1% of it. And yet somehow to the majority of people, to the masses, this does not compute, right? So they need things. So this is why some of my colleagues, even though they know how to uh, calculate the real energetic influences, they actually uh, prefer to sell amulets because it's much easier to sell amulets, even though you need to sell more of them to reach the amount that you would normally get from a real feng shui consult, the one that actually delivers the results. But it's much easier to sell because, hey, you know, you give me money and I give you something you can touch. It's a very easy sale. It's a much more difficult sale to think, hey, you know, there's this influence that is in that corner, in that sector of your house, that's going to change your life. So give me your money for something you need to believe me is there, but you can't know, right? It's much more difficult. But guys, this is the objective reality. So that's why it didn't work for you. Maybe, right? Maybe you've tried this before and it didn't work because it couldn't work because objects have nothing to do with feng shui. It's the influence of various astronomical objects. So what does this have to do? How, how does it actually uh, apply to us? How, how do we do it? How do we? So I'll give it to you in a very, very short answer in a nutshell, right? These astronomical objects, they are aligned to us taking the reference point as the center of the building or the, the apartment that we are in. And they are aligned to us corresponding to um, what we have devised as the cardinal sectors. Now, the cardinal sectors is just one method of dividing that space. In feng shui, there are other methods. Many of them are uh, splitting those cardinal sectors into smaller and smaller spaces because you get much more accuracy. But just to, to keep it simple, let's talk about cardinal sectors like, you know, north, south, east, west, south, west, and so on, so on. So feng shui recognizes that each of these areas has a certain influence. And this influence is particular, individual, to each and every house. And there are methods to calculate this. So then the actual way of performing feng shui is to take into account the people's energy for whom you do this, and then to calculate what the compatibility is between the energy that feng shui predicts is in that area of the house and the people's energetic structure according to what their priorities are so we have you know areas that are good for financial abundance they bring you more opportunities to make money or they bring you more opportunities for career advancement there are other areas other energies right um, with an energy and influence that is very good for relationships so that is very good if you want to you know cultivate healthy uh, balanced nourishing relationships there are other areas which are very good for overall harmony there are other areas which are very good for courage etc 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 right the bad stuff happens when you use them wrong because you don't understand them right and you go against the flow of the universe what does that mean so basically, if you try to, uh, let's say, sleep, which is a kind of a soothing, relaxing activity in which you're basically focusing your attention to the inside. And that means that you are focused on your internal world. That is your dialogue with yourself, right? Your relationship with yourself or your relationship with the people that are close to you. So basically, family matters relationship matters right so here we want harmony we want stability we want soothing nice and flow nice and, and slow flow right that same energy which is good for relationships isn't good for money and if you sleep in an energy that is good for money it's gonna be good for your money but it's actually gonna mess up your relationships it's also probably gonna mess up your health some areas are just not good at all for anything and other areas are you know basically all around it so there's differences but it all starts with understanding the very basics you know the way 
feng shui, the real feng shui that delivers results, functions is to understand that in various areas of the house, there are these different energies. All we need to do is just to be there because this is, this is the, the, the very simple reality and where the magic happens. We, like any organism, any plant, we are in a constant exchange of energy with the environment. And what happens is that when we are in this constant exchange, we breathe in, we take in, our bodies take in this energy that is present in that environment. So if it's good energy, good for us. If it's bad energy, bad for us. It's as simple as that, right? Now, that as a principle, when it goes to the application, of course, then it gets quite complicated quite fast. But that's not for this video and that's not for you guys, unless you want to become feng shui practitioners, right? But if you're just users of feng shui, right? You mean you want to understand how it works generally and so that you can actually use my knowledge or uh, someone else's knowledge for you in terms that they or I help you in getting the understanding of how you can use this energy for you, you need to understand the basics, right? You don't need to understand how to build a car, but you need to understand how the car works if you are to drive one, right? You need to understand the basics of it, right? So, how does actually feng shui influence us, right? We've already mentioned the big parts, right? We're relationships, health, career. But one thing I wanted to, to, to pinpoint, there is one way to really understand how feng shui works and if it is working for you in a good way, right? So it's very simple. Do you have ample opportunities in your life? Do you have a smooth flowing life? Do you feel that things come to you naturally and softly and smoothly and you don't need to fight for stuff and you feel that the universe is keeping you somehow in its lap and it's bringing to you various opportunities and whenever you face problems there's always a solution close by there's always a person close by to help you out if you don't know what to do that my friends is the sign of good feng shui that is the sign that you are immersed in a smooth flowing energy that is nourishing for you. If you feel the reverse, if you feel that the, your whole life is actually going against the flow, it's like you're fighting for every minute of every day. It's like you're, you're going against the current. You, everything comes with a very, very heavy price. Everything comes after a fight and even then, it might be that you do everything in your power and it still crumbles and every opportunity comes very difficult to you uh, or you don't get opportunities at all or you get opportunities but they are kind of poisoned and they come with a very very hefty price or um, maybe it's much easier for stuff to go wrong than it is for it to go right all this all these things are signs that this is the bad feng shui for you, right? And when I say it's a bad feng shui for you, I also want to introduce another little subject. We won't go deep into this video, but I just wanted to mention it. Um, it is very likely that that same feng shui is good for somebody else, but not for you. So you see, it, it becomes tailored. Uh, professional feng shui is very, very individualized and it's, it's very tailor-made to your priorities, to your energetic structure. A professional feng shui practitioner will most often use your ba zi chart, that is your Chinese astrological chart, because we need to understand your energetic structure if we are to adapt feng shui to work for you. So if you've liked this video, click subscribe and uh, stay tuned for other interesting videos and maybe you know drop me a comment of what you would like me to address next maybe you have some more specific questions until then hey make sure you stay tuned stay connected see you next time